can be achieved. This is really the goal. Fixed dose combinations are where we're going. The first trial of fixed dose combinations, the accomplished trial, has now been published in the New England Journal. And so people really should not be afraid to migrate towards starting with fixed dose combination of antihypertensive medicines. Lifestyle modifications, this table that you can see here in figure in slide 14, is a table that is in the JNC7, and I was asked to put this together to show the uh, differences of blood pressure, the range of blood pressure reductions you can achieve strictly by doing lifestyle modification. So I think this is important to give physicians an appreciation for what lifestyle can actually do if the patient adheres to it. Now, what about antihypertensive medications? There are a whole host of antihypertensive medications. You can see them listed here in slide 15. And we also should add to this the endothelin receptor antagonists that are soon to be uh, coming out. Um, so there's no question we have a panoply of agents that can reduce blood pressure by a number of different means, different mechanisms. We can mix and match these for complementary mechanisms. And really a way to do that is shown in the next slide. Looking at the blood pressure equation, keeping in mind heart rate is part of this equation as well, and looking at the different classes of antihypertensive agents and how they actually interact with the uh, equation of blood pressure. You can see certain classes like beta blockers, calcium antagonists, diuretics, actually affect both sides of the equation and so would be quite useful as agents used early on to uh, give you a benefit. But there is a lot of focus on peripheral resistance and uh, a very popular combination that's been used in many people are blockade of the renin angiotensin system in concert either with calcium antagonists or diuretics which you can see fit both sides of the equation. What did JNC7 recommend as an approach that would be reasonable? Well, the algorithm is shown in slide 17, and we very clearly said that if your blood pressure was greater than 20 over 10 above the goal, and you don't see that there, but you do see 160 over 100, that's 20 millimeters systolic and 10 millimeters diastolic above the goal of 140 over 90, you should start with two drug therapy. If not, you can start with monotherapy and build, depending on the clinical situation. 20 over 10 was derived from the same analysis that we got prehypertension from because it showed, that analysis showed that for every 20 millimeters increase in systolic and 10 millimeter increase in diastolic pressure above 115 over 75, there was a doubling of cardiovascular risk. And so even at 135 over 85, while you're below 140 over 90, your risk is higher for any given age between 40 and 80 than you would be if you were at an even lower pressure. So again, this is why we recommended starting with combination therapy. The second point in this slide, which I think is important, is to use agents that have compelling indications. And we sorted that out very nicely in a table. And lastly, and I think as important, Patients and physicians should know when to see a board-certified hypertension specialist of the American Society of Hypertension. And this is what the final box indicates, is if you have a patient with resistant hypertension, defined as three or more drugs, or actually three drugs at maximal doses, and you still have not achieved goal, then a hypertension specialist should be the referral point because that would be a way to um, get a more focused workup and um, this is the whole point of having a board certification. Now what are the barriers to achieving blood pressure goals? There are a number